Right, you've come to the part of the show where we demo something important and one of the aspects of the game where um, people always seem to find murky is around malls, particularly rolling malls, defending malls. Um, we'll talk about shift drives and so on. These guys have all the details and they'll also be able to show me and uh, tell me a little bit more about the technicality surrounding it. But just to kick things off, um, there's been widespread debate about does a mall belong in the game of rugby? Is it just um, legalized obstruction, that sort of thing? Let's take it from um, yep. right at the beginning. What constitutes um, on the rugby field a mall? Well, it's, uh, most, most malls are from lineouts or from kickoffs, really. Uh, it's hard to set up a mini mall, or that it does uh, get uh, Italy use that uh, tactic occasionally. But a mall is basically when a player is on his feet, he makes contact with an opponent, and another player is in contact, either an attacker or a defender, yep. and that, bo that ball is off the ground and he's on his feet. If his knee hits the ground, it's immediately called a tackle. Oh, yes. So, uh, uh, so the, the, the ball carrier who's head up, held up in a choke tackle should be trying to get his knee yeah, on the ground right. as fast. If he's not, and he's on his feet, that's yep. a maul. But, but let's just, just just for clarity on that, it can't be a maul and then become a tackle or become a, a ruck. No. So it's either it's a tackle situation. That tackle situation either becomes a maul yep. or becomes a ruck. That's right. Can we just start on the, on the line-out situation? Yes. I'll just Can leave my crutches please, for this please one. Please put them down. Because you're going to be our line-out jumper. Killing us. Okay? Off. So, okay, so I'll we be don't the need to throw it in. We just give him the ball. You okay. can be a support player. Yeah. You can be a support player. <laughs> the most important thing, I'll also support Sean. Yeah. So the most important thing, we're playing in this direction. Yep. Playing turn around. Because, yeah, that's right. So when yep. we support, we lift and we turn around and we support in this direction. But the opponent has to have an ability to reach and touch the ball carrier first. Yep. Once Jean makes contact with that ball carrier, the ball must be transferred through the hands, and I'm no longer going to be a support player. I'm now going to come in as another, and you have to transfer it through the hands to me at the back, and I've got to stay bound by my shoulder to this ball. Now, what used to happen in the past yep. was that that ball, the support player, would come in, Yep. And again, there was still... Often what happened was the support player would go behind and yep. block the opposition. That's illegal now. Instruction. Now, if you... S yeah. Now, as, a, as another player coming into this yep. driving mall, I have... I, in the past, used to go over the top and he of, goes and to the with back. another player, and he sucks to the back. So now we've got three players, two players, and a player at the back. An almost unstoppable mall. So the referees are refereeing far more strictly the skill of moving it from Jean to the back. It has to be through the hands. And secondly, lots of teams are no longer taking contact. So as Jean goes up, I won't make contact with Jean. Mm, yeah. And one of my players, if, if that ball is, is passed back, one of my players can run round and he can tackle quite legally because there's no more being created at the front. If the ways to defend it quickly sure. is that I can sack Jean, yeah. but if he's passed it on, you can create another mall or the ball must be played. Shift it, take it up. Or four players hit the small and we try and drive it generally in the direction of the touchline. Yeah. Any further comments? I mean, I mean, with that, what's, what's nice about when you set up a mall, then there's, there's offside lines. And in that way, then people can know where they can go. Getting up the momentum from a driving mall. Good for the, for the baton at the back. The scrum half can look for options. You can play the, <coughs> the men coming from the blind side. You can play hit the center, get over the gain line again. Most tries are scored from line outs. Yeah. And, yeah, and, part we, of and we, saw, we saw quite a few tries there actually a few this tries. weekend. And even if we look at, I think, I know the Lions scored one try, sure. um, you know, where, where they, well, the, the Bulls actually, as well, as well, one where they set up the mall, you know, great, Perfect. fantastic mall. Um, the the Sunwolves not committing to, to stopping that, and they scored they scored a try off that. The Lions also, the Lions also scored a try off a mall where they used a different tactic, where they actually um, used. Um, but the shark, the sharks first as well with a with, with a mall try. Um, again, hard work from the players. Um, ball still in front, going over going over the line. Um, so if, if used correctly, again, defenders on the, on the, uh, close to the touchline here, a 14 and a 9, they're not used to defending malls. The line shifted it to the front of the mall, sure. or legally uh, attacking in a different space and, and scoring that try. So if used correctly, it can be yeah. a fantastic Good attacking variation. weapon, and just the variation, I think, so, is the key. So shifting the point of attack on the mall, an example of that last yeah. Lions one, is, is, is Warren Whiteley jumped in the middle. If, if Jean jumped in the middle, yeah. and I'm the front of the line-out whose yeah. Pereira was here, yeah. Jean in the air passes it down to me. The guy who was supporting Jean supports me. I get another support yeah, no. there, and now 
So even if Jean is sacked, mm. we can still I, I'm up. still on my feet and I can still generate pace and power. And you haven't changed lanes. And I haven't yes, changed and lanes. that is different to changing, as we yeah. know, changing lanes yes. where we up set up a mall, okay. right. I know get sacked. I pulled, I sack. I'm on the, on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then you come with me. Okay, now I've moved the ball behind. Yeah. And, and now, now I'm moving. Yeah. Yeah. And now he makes contact and he's not carrying the ball. That is changing lanes. Yeah. So but if he, ch if, he, if he's sacked and he goes and makes contact, that's but right. he has the ball, that's, that's not changing. And then talk to me about obstruction, gentlemen. When, is, when does it become obstruction? We've seen truck and trailer called um, over numerous years. We saw in the Bulls game, uh, the ball quickly being um, transferred yeah. to the back. What went wrong there? Yeah. We have a look at this. Have a look at Kuni Ustazen. Kuni Ustazen has gone right behind this, the line-out jumper, and he's penalized because he's got between the line-out jumper and a Reds player, stopping the ability of that Reds player. And again, it's all about the fairness. You know, yes. fairness between attack and defense. The defending team there had no opportunity to actually get to the guy with the yeah, ball, true. and that's what we don't want. Yeah. So so the then, double bunking is not yeah. something that you're supposed to see in that game. And right. Then, then there's yeah, I mentioned one. the Bulls one as well. Um, Pops? Uh, it obviously didn't go quite according to plan. We saw the ball move over the couple of backs of a few players. First, first of all, the, the, the line-out was compromised in terms of the line-out throw. But at the end, the ball moves past over the players who are already in front of the ball. That is an obstruction because there's a player in front of the ball. Yeah. By the time the ball went to the back, it was, there was actually a misjudgment yeah. and actually execution let them really down. But if it had gone hand-to-hand -to -hand yeah, towards the, the yeah, back... If that goes straight there to that to Pierre Skuman, who goes on to Luete, it goes to Pierre Skuman and then to number six, you know, that's then fine. it's all legal. But yeah. once you skip a player like yeah. that, you know, then, uh, then that's illegal. So, they, so to show how compli complicated it was, if Jean jumps and his arms are up in there and I come too early here. Yeah, now yeah. I'm here. Now, now so he I'm... can't, I, he, he's transferring it over my over back. Over your back. That's illegal. Already. He, he, so I have to wait to as have the ripper, his arms back. must come down. Now this gives opportunity to the defending side to sack Jean, or to, or to commit it. two or three or four defenders True. to drive the small back, and, and the ref then says one, and on the second, I'm giving you one chance, I'm calling the second chance, you've got to play the ball. Another penalty we saw a lot of, swimming up the side. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's something that you're not allowed to. Once the, the, how do you join them more, first of all, is that you join from the most hind foot. So you come in from the most hind foot and stay there. By swimming around the corner now, we are on the bind, and then you're trying to get an advantage of going around instead of going through the middle. Yeah. It's going around and then playing and trying to interfere with that. That is illegal. With the guy because you haven't joined the players from the, the they're, bind. They're swimming, swimming, is swimming. Usually, swimming around is usually a defender who doesn't go through the middle of the mall but goes from the side. But there was the other occasion when Best had the ball in the Irish game was yeah. about to score a try yes. Henshaw came from 10 yards back because he's allowed to the mall had moved more than a meter and he came and joined past best here yeah. and the moment he did that it was obstruction penalty to Wales had he joined best here on the most from, from this side Eagle. and driven and then, that's and then transfer and transfer and then the trans ball. Yeah. I don't even or need he to doesn't need, yeah, yeah. would I be oversimplifying it if I said this is the offside line well, offside it, line is the most hind foot of the ball. Yeah. yeah, it's not the ball. The it's ball is the ball. offside so, line. So, so, the, so, so you got to if enter. The back foot of the, back the, foot of yeah. the mall is yeah. offside line. Yeah. Great. Um, Jesus, so much that happens Any? around malls. We speak <laughs> about scoring directly from malls. We also talk about creating momentum uh, of malls, which is a wonderful attack tool. Yeah. Um, look, so, so, so obviously by, by setting up a mall, you, you attract the defence. So the defense must either come here and try and commit. stop it, you know, they commit to it and try and stop them all, or what they do, sometimes they stay off and hope that four or five guys, you know, we'll not the whole it. pack can stop it. Once that happens, then as they're attacking to you, keep on focusing on the mall to get momentum. If the other players then commit to this mall, That's then nice. suddenly there's more space out the back. The, the important thing, Jean, I think Jean, when, when you were playing, you had uh, Fouri Dupree, who was mm. a masterful yeah. organiser of driving malls. And, of course, the Bulls were very, very good at it. What, what Fouri did was at the back, and he would have a player who, and, and everything was in the direction. He'd be looking at, is there one defender on this side? How many on the blind side? And then he'd just tap the last man's backside, and they'd do a little 8-9 to the open, with a, with a blindside wing coming in, often Brian Abana, and an inside centre coming short, and then, and then uh, Faree would choose between one of those two guys and cause real trouble with the defence. Or even better, attack the blindside where maybe it's only the hooker and the blindside wing, and you can do a, a little 8-9 eight, 
eight to nine or a last man in the, in the mall to nine to blindside winger. And those were very, very effective. And of course, it's a great exit strategy yes. too, that if you don't get the penalty, you know, the number nine is in a really good position. There's a driving mall. The last guy can give it. He can set himself in this position to take that step yeah. back and hit the box. And also you can make the mall nice and long. Yeah. So yeah. in other yeah. words, the yeah. offensive players can't, can't exactly. get Get to uh, do that kick. To the kick. We're reaching the end of uh, our demo segment so very quickly, gentlemen, because we've heard so much debate over the last couple of years. Does it belong in rugby? Should it stay? Um, because we hear sounds of uh, noises of dissent sometimes. It's, it's, it's such a big part of rugby. It's like taking the scrum away. Uh, you know, so if you spend a lot of time on it and if you, if you, if you actually use it as an attacking weapon and all the varieties, it can be fantastic. And also, defensively, you need to put work in it as well. So I think there's a, there's a fantastic place for it within I, I agree entirely. There's a much fairer contest between defence and attack, whereas in the past, prior to the way that the referees are refereeing it now, it was very much in favour of the attacking side. So there definitely is a role for it, in my view. I just like it for the fact that the forward starts are thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was quite rough on forwards. You're going to have to deal with that man next Henshaw, to you. <laughs> Henshaw was a backline player. We messed that up. <laughs> Remember, you can always use that hashtag SSRugby. If you want us to demo anything in particular, if you enjoyed this, if there's a little bit more you'd like us to expand on, we can definitely revisit malls in the next few weeks.